So let's include the last part of the slender logic, which will actually check for obstacles. Okay, we're going to check if we do actually have a line of sight, or if there is an obstacle in the way. Now, let's just make these walls a little bit taller. There we go. So that is obvious and much higher than our NPC. So how are we going to implement this line of sight check? So we're checking if visible here, but we're checking if visible, pardon me, by definition of a dot product. And then if we are visible, we're checking a maximum range. So if he's outside of the range, we're going to leave him to chase him. So we fall down here to where I've put the comment. Instead of immediately decreasing the health, we do actually have to check our line of sight. Now how are we going to do that? Let's bring back the community scripting reference. And we had a raycast. Okay. Now Raycast involves an origin, but a directional vector. Now we've done a lot of calculations to do with directions, directions and distances, square magnitudes. So there's got to be a better way of raycasting without having to duplicate all that. Now, I do know of something that exists, a brother of the raycast. Let's see if we can find it in physics. There we go. That's actually turning out great. So in our physics, you see we have our ray cast. We have one here called line cast. Now, if you remember back to debugs, debug draw ray and a debug draw line. Okay, so a ray wants an origin and a directional vector. Now, a line just wants it a start point and a finish point. So there we have it. We have a line cast, and we can line cast two points. So that's actually even a lot less code than a ray cast. So let's use line cast here. So before we immediately say, okay, we're visible, let's do a line cast. I'm going to check if this is going to happen if it's true. Let's work on this first. If physics dot line cast and the parameters are we start vector three and our end vector three. Now our start vector three is going to be a transform position. And our end position, our end vector three, is going to be our target position. So there we have it. If physics line cast mine transform position. Now we want to check some information from that line cast. So let's go back to the reference because I don't have any information there. Okay, further down, here we have a better definition. We still need some hit information because we want to check if that game object name is player, so we can see the player, we have a line of sight. Or if not. So after we do the line cast, we're going to check now if more curly braces. So what are we checking? Uh, first of all, let's create our hit information variable to store our hit collected data. So our var hit is a ray cast hit. Because this is still a ray cast, but just in a different form. Okay, so we have our star position, our end position, and now we want to gather hit information. So now, if our hit, and if the collider of that hit, and the game object that that collider is attached to, and what is its name? And if that name is equal to our target transform name, so we're not just going to hard code it, we're going to make it smart. 
our target and our transform we can access the name of our transform. So if our hit collider does have the same name as our target, we have line of sight. So we can absolutely fall into this. Now um, check the range is within range. But if he doesn't have a line of sight, are we gonna let him keep moving like we do everywhere else? This is entirely up to you. I'm gonna leave it in your hands, but I'm gonna code it in to show you where it would go. Okay, so if we have if we cast a line and if that line cast returns our target's name, we have a line of sight. So then we are going to stop moving and we're going to decrease the health. If we do not have a line of sight, then it's safe to say we can't see him over a hill, past beyond the building. So we're just going to leave him to keep chasing, alright? Because we can't see him, so we won't see him moving. Actually, yeah, we. That is a good idea. Just leave that in. Alright? So we've thrown a few things in there. Let's compile that and see if we can check that happening. Now we're working from the perspective of the camera as the target. So should we, let's just get rid of the player. That's confusing things. The main camera is the player, it's our target. So let's do the other side of the wall. Let's rotate it around. So we can see from our Eustrum, we should definitely be looking directly at our enemy there, but there is a wall in the way. So let's just hit play and see what happens. Let's watch that is visible variable again. No. I can't see the camera. Just coming nice and close. Okay, there's our camera just at the bottom center of the scene here. And there's our enemy which we can see quite happy. So let's hit play, and now we still, uh, let's make it 40. So if you had a distance of 40, which that is within that 40 I'm sure, you would not move. But there is a wall in the way, so let's check to see if this is working. So hit play, turn around, he's found a wall, he's finding his way around the wall. You can see the other side of the wall. Whoop, what's happening here? He zoomed right in on us. Okay, something's broken here. What's going on? This visual is equal to false. That was too late. Let's try that again. So this visible is true, but he's behind a wall. Okay, so he's not behind the wall, and he's in the range of 40. He's coming right for us. Okay, where is this broken? What have I done? Well, always when you're having problems, the first thing you should always do is a debug. Okay, what are we trying to find out here? We're trying to find out hit collider game object name. So let's see what our line cast can see at least. Let's start there. Hit play. Wall, wall, wall. Wall, wall, wall. Why are we still seeing a wall? He's visible, we check the range. He's quite over this range. Let's just check that his visible variable as he comes around the wall too. Okay, so the camera is at the bottom left of the scene here. I hit play and I'm gonna watch his visible now. He's visible. Okay, he's visible. And he's within the maximum range, but he's moving. What have I done? I have a bear. Start position, end position. Is there something silly I've put in here? Start position, end position. Okay. Main. There we go, I know exactly what's going on. Let's look at our camera. Does our camera have a collider? No, it does not. 
Okay, there is no collider attached to the camera. So that's where that's breaking. Let's just bodgy that up. Component physics capsule collider. Okay, let's expand that so we can actually see the capsule collider. Great. Okay, problem solving at its finest. Capture collider, let's make it a high level 2. There we go. It's starting to look like things. We can even bring the camera up. That is truly eye level. You can see it penetrating the floor there. So there we go. When we build our character, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be a camera inside the first person controller with a collider. Okay, so now we have a collider, we can reference the name of our target. Remember, ray casts, line casts need a collider as a reference. Everything works off colliders. So let's try that again. Double check everything, we have a maximum range. We have a camera with a collider, we have our enemy. He's going to walk around the wall. And he's going to tell us right here in the console what the line cast hit is returning. So yeah, wall, 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 bang, main camera. The main camera is the name of our target. So fantastic. As soon as he's invisible, he stopped moving. Now let's just check that out. Uh, with the rotation of the visible. Okay, he's not visible. A little bit of a problem there with the normals of the wall. Let's just stop that. There you go, he's clear the normals of the wall. Great, so you can see even then how important colliders are. Alright, do I need to show that off again? How can we do this another way? Let's put him in another position. You can actually clearly see him there, so let's just get him on the edge of that wall. Alright. Console, hit play. He's coming towards us, he's within range, but he can see a wall. Okay, that raycast is pretty sensitive. You can see, you can see the scene view. Look, raycast is coming from his center, or the line cast, I should say. Let's do that too. He's got debugs for everything else. Now we can see the name. Let's do a debug. Draw line. And this is taking exactly the same parameters as our line cast. Okay. Again, all in the previous video. I'm going to set the color to. Let's just change the colors. I'll just make it green. So he has yellow for his shoulders, red when his shoulders hit things, and green for his line cast. Now let's see that line cast in action. There, yeah, there's his shoulders. Okay, we're not getting a ah, Did I save it? We're still running that. No, I didn't save the script. Always save. One last time. It's close to the wall. There's our debug draw line happening. Now, if I just do that one more time, let me play a little bit more, a little bit closer, so he's in that range. He will start drawing the line sooner. I'm going to hit play one more time. Let him get close, and there we go. See, as soon as he's within that range of 40, he starts detecting his line of sight. You can see quite clear with the debug, the line of sight is interfered with, with by the wall collider. So let's continue and watch that green line. Okay, so he's debugging, debugging, you see he's hit the wall, there we go, we have a clear line of sight. There we go, and that's what I was saying about the sensitivity, see it's coming from his center, so that's why he's stopping it halfway across. Alright, that's enough of mumbling, trying to explain things. Is the last part of our functionality until we start working on our player object. Then we can come back and work on the help.